Good evening, everyone. If we can call this meeting to order and call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Melody? Here. Mr. Weininger? Here. Mr. Bain? Here. And Chris Valentine is taking care of his family tonight. And Mr. Harris is not here and hopefully he's on here. his way. So. He'll be here. Okie doke. Dr. Lucas, can you lead us in the pledge, please? Absolutely. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. <laughs> okay, I almost sat on the floor. Thank you. Excuse me, he's walking in. Okay. Here he is. If we can have approval for the special board minutes of March 2nd, is there a motion? A second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mr. Harris? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes. And is there a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 8th? So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. Mrs. May? Yes. Motion passes. We've been really busy. Um, may, is there someone that can make a motion to approve the special board minutes of March 12th, please? So, so moved. moved. Second. All right. Moved. Call the roll. Mr. Melody? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes. Motion passes. Approval of the special board minutes of March 18th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes, motion passes. Is there a motion to approve the regular work session minutes of March 22nd? So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Melody? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes, motion passes. Um, approval for the special board minutes of March 26th. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes, motion passes. Lastly, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Am I going too fast? No, you're okay. good. Call the roll, please. Uh, Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. May. Yes, motion passes. Uh, moving on to awards and recognitions, would you like to talk about that, Dr. Lucas? On to awards and recognitions. Yes, thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Doug Baker, and he is here to present both Dublin and Scioto High School wrestling champions. So, thank Mr. you, Baker. Dr. Lucas. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce Mike Allring, who is the principal at Dublin Kaufman, to introduce his wrestling champions to us. Good evening, Dr. Lucas, Mr. Kern, Board of Education. Thank you for allowing us to be here, and thank you for celebrating our student athletes who do an amazing job. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn this over to our athletic director, Mr. Dwayne Sheldon. Thank you. Um, two individuals here uh, tonight we'd like to honor, uh, Dublin Kaufman wrestlers. Uh, the plan is that a year from now we'll be back up here um, since they both return. I'd uh, like to first start with a freshman, Omar Ayub. Come on up here, Omar. Omar, 113 pounds, uh, freshman year. Went 34 and 1. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 
Next in individual, uh, Seth Shoemate, who is a junior. Come on up, Seth. Seth was a state champion uh, this year with a record of 30 and one. Uh, going back to his freshman year, he was a state champion with a record of 50 and one. His sophomore year, unfortunately, un unfortunately because of the pandemic, was not able to compete uh, because there was not a postseason tournament. Went 43 and 0 that year before uh, they shut it down. So his high school career record is 123 and 2. Uh, freshman year, his one loss was a close one to a gentleman from out of state. Um, I believe in the uh, uh, Ironman tournament early in the season. And then this year, his only loss was due to a injury that he could not finish the match. So technically, that goes as a defeat. So Seth, his second state champion, will always wonder about that. I guess we shouldn't say we we'll always wonder about it. He would have had another one um, if they would have competed that year. But at 30 and one, his junior year, 195 pound state champion, Seth Shoemate. Congratulations. Our Sayota wrestler could not make it this evening, so we'll reschedule him for a future board meeting. We have one Golden Shamrock tonight. We'll have another one at the second meeting in April. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Tyler Wolf, who is the Director of Elementary Education. Thank you, Mr. Baker. And um, thank you, Dr. Lucas and uh, members of the board and everyone tonight for allowing us this opportunity to recognize uh, one of our friends and colleagues, uh, Susan Wittig, who will be receiving the Golden Shamrock tonight. So I've known Susan for about eight years, since the time she was hired as the principal of uh, Deer Run. And uh, Susan has you know, displayed some of the most outstanding leadership characteristics of uh, any principal in our district, and one reason she was selected for uh, the leader of Hopewell Elementary uh, this year. And Susan, you know, I just want to say a few things about her to start off. She's, she can be the quiet one in our group, and, um, but don't take that to mean that she isn't involved or committed or dedicated. Um, quite to the contrary, Susan is a listener and an observer, and she contributes insights and ideas and creative answers at precisely the time that we need them in our group. Uh, from being involved with the leader and me over the years, she understands that uh, seek first to understand. And there have been countless times in our principal's meetings when we're all discussing a problem or brainstorming ideas, and Susan will stay quiet through a lot of it. And then when the time is just right, and she's thought about what's been said, and she'll offer an intelligent, focused, and practical solution uh, that no one else has thought of. And we all know we can count on her for these great ideas. But really, besides these great ideas, what makes Susan a great leader comes down to what I believe are a few things to the relationships that she builds with her staff and her parents and the kids in the building, her empathy for those in need, her compassion and willingness to help others, her courage to be vulnerable, and her bravery to stay the course when work and life becomes very challenging. And her consistent modeling of these behaviors sets the example for her staff and for everyone around her. She's worked tremendously hard this past year, opening Hopewell and with all that comes with it, especially in the midst of a global pandemic. It's almost too much to even uh, describe. We were meetings all summer and all last year, and then transitioning into opening the building is quite the task, and she did it with, with uh, made it look easy when she did that. So before I read some of the comments from the staff and the nominations, I just wanna personally say thanks to Susan um, I'm honored to be here to help celebrate with you, and we're all happy that you're receiving this, and we're honored to have you on our team. So thank you, Susan. And some of the things that I wanted to read from the nominations uh, that I think help describe Susan's leadership style even um, a lot better than I can, that she's, she's created a building environment based on love and acceptance. Uh, she, she continues to speak her truth while listening to others. She's a champion for all. She takes time to make sure each student and staff member inside the walls of Hopewell know that they're loved and appreciated. She leads in love. She exemplifies leadership and love. 
She's extremely supportive of her staff, even when we can't gather physically. Some other adjectives, she's calm, steadfast, and she's flexible, positive, kind. She's committed while raising her own family, providing foster care, and doing community service. She's an advocate for all children. She's a learner, compassionate, supportive of others' growth. She creates a safe, fun, caring learning environment for the staff. She values and cares for all teachers, support staff, and children at Hopewell. She listens, cares, takes action. She's an amazing mother, wife, friend, and daughter. And just one quick story that was listed in here. Susan is a child-centered leader who always puts the students first. One of my most outstanding memories of her was during the beginning of school during a time at Deer Run. I needed her support, but more importantly, a new student needed her support in her special way of understanding. Starting kindergarten in a new country with a new unknown language can be frightening. This little child was upset and it crawled under a table. Susan, dressed in her business best for a meeting later that day, came into my classroom and crawled under the table with them. She stayed with him until he was calm and showed him there was nothing to be afraid of. Eventually, they crawled slowly out, making their way towards the rest of the group on the carpet. Her empathy for students and staff is shown through example. She did not reprimand him or remove him from the classroom. She showed him that he mattered and belonged. This little one went on to make great progress because she understood. She checked in on him and she supported him. She set him on his journey of learning in a new country where he could become anything he wanted to be. So there are many more comments and the main thing comes down to Susan Leeds with love and it's all through all of her nominations and I see it every time I go to Hopewell. And I think that's just the way we all should be leading. So I wanna congratulate Susan for receiving the Golden Shamrock tonight. Good evening and thank you, Dr. Lucas, members of the board, central office staff. It is truly an honor to receive the Golden Shamrock Award this evening. My journey in Dublin City Schools began nearly 40 years ago. I'm showing my age tonight. With my hair and ponytails and wiggly front teeth, I began my journey at Jerome Elementary, which no longer stands. As I continued my path at Indian Run and Sells and Kaufman, little did I know what amazing educational experiences would be ahead of me. From my favorite bus driver, Mrs. Bishop, who greeted me every day with a smile, to one of my favorite cafeteria cooks, Miss Sylvia, that happened to sneak me some extra chocolate wacky cake when I helped her load the lunch trays during recess time. There were so many individuals who truly exemplified the Dublin difference for me every step of the way. Thanks to the talented educators at every single level, I found my love for learning and my interest in becoming an educator. From designing and launching rockets at the cells parking lot or creating egg drop containers to help an egg survive a drop off the Indian Run Falls one day, countless educational experiences like these made a tremendous impact on me. What truly captivated me through all of these were all of the staff members that taught me about the world around me and the importance of accepting others and giving back to our community. Fast forward my journey to 2013 when I had the opportunity to make the Dublin difference myself by returning to DCS as a school principal. From that day forward, I made a promise to always make decisions in the best interest of students. Each day, I try to exemplify the excellence in education, equity, and inclusion that was instilled in me throughout my time at DCS. Of course, nobody wins this distinguished award alone. I have been blessed to work with two amazing building staffs at both Deer Run and Hopewell Elementary. Thank you to both of those staffs for always putting kids and families first and for helping all of our kids feel seen, valued, and successful. Tonight, I wear a golden shamrock necklace with tremendous pride. 
prior to his passing, my dad gave this very special gift to my mom, who won also the Golden Shamrock Award nearly 15 years ago. During her 30 years of service to this district, she passed it on to me last week, and I will wear it as a steadfast reminder to my commitment to making a positive difference in the lives of children each day. I'm extremely thankful to accept this special award tonight in honor of the amazing students and staff that walk through our doors at Dublin City Schools each day. Thank you. Okay, we have a few people signed up for public participation this evening. Um, please limit each of your um, comments to three minutes. And the first one up is Mike Nutter. Come on up to the podium and give your name and address, please. Yeah, Mike Nutter, 5372 Coachman Road, Apartment C, Columbus, Ohio, 43220. So first of all, thanks for the time. Uh, some of you I know, uh, some of you have known a long time. I sent everybody uh, an email to the board. I don't know if you've received that email, uh, so I just want to make sure that you've got that. That's a lengthy email, several things uh, regarding the district as a whole and as the athletic programs. I'm here tonight uh, to speak to you on behalf of uh, my support for Richie Beard who's the varsity coach at Jerome. Uh, I come here tonight with, it's disappointing to me in a way that I, I started my career here as a teacher, I was a coach. I've had four kids in this system, one transferred over to Liberty, one graduated from Jerome, one's a senior this year at Jerome, and I have a sophomore. A sophomore plays basketball. So I come here tonight, you know, I support Mr. Beard as a teacher as a coach and as a person. My senior has him for class, and she has uh, enjoyed her time there, and he's been a huge part of the reason that she's successfully graduating. So that's, that's the flip side of just the coach, Mr. Beard. When I come here tonight, I wanted to get through to, I haven't spoken, I told, I told Wade this, I've known Wade a long time, I haven't spoken at a board meeting forever. I was superintendent for 13 years, and I sat on the other side and listened to people come up and talk but I've never, never come to a board meeting and sat on this side. So I understand how the workings of a school system are. I understand how supplemental contracts work. I get all that. But if the majority of varsity parents that I talk to, because my son plays varsity, has for two years, are in support of Mr. Beard, and I think a lot of the people here are, and I know that the JV parents and the freshman parents are in support. And when I talk to the athletic director or the high school principal, I can't get any answer as to, you know, the word is that they're not going to renew his supplemental contract. I haven't had a, I haven't heard a decision one way or the other. There's, you know, Joe Blind said there'll be a decision Friday. I haven't heard it one way or the other. So I can't come here and say he doesn't have a job because I don't know for sure. Because I know they automatically non-renew. So. I come here tonight with a decision hasn't been made, that's great. I support him and I would like to see him be renewed as the varsity basketball coach. You know, our student athletes are confused. There's no, you know, when we look at this, you know, if you're going to support a program, he's put a program in place. They understand the system, they're young, they're moving forward, so why the change? You know, we're starting to get some consistency in this program, so why the change? You know, it hurts many people, program exposure for the recruiting, the opportunities, so why the change? You know, con you know, lifting schedules, conditioning schedules are out, and now we're going to make a change. So, you know, Mr. Beard sat on the interview committee for the football coach just a few months ago. But if you valued his opinion to hire a new coach, why wouldn't you want him back as another coach for the following year? I think, the, I think you're creating a, you know, the athletic department. I don't see, I coach at Scioto. I don't see these issues there. I don't see them at Kaufman. But watching from where I sit and living in this district since 1992, 
There's a, we're creating a bad culture at Jerome, a revolving door of coaches, and the optics are bad. And I don't say a lot, but I come here tonight because I felt something needed to be said. So I believe there's a lot of moving parts to this situation. I know you've heard the, the, the phrase, the squeaky wheel. I've lived here long enough to know what that's like. So if the majority support Mr. Beard, I believe he's got a great program. I'm not seeing or heard anything that would lead me to think differently. Why are we ruining Mr. Beard's coaching career, his livelihood, and setting our student athletes back? For what? Another change. So I know my three minutes up, but I, tonight, I come here tonight to ask you if Mr. Beard hasn't been renewed, I'm asking you that you renew him. If you made a decision not to, I'm asking you to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Butler. Good evening, and uh, thanks for giving us this opportunity to speak to the entire board. Um, I have two kids in uh, Paul Butler, 8175 Crossgate Court North, Dublin, Ohio, 43017. I have two kids. Um, one that just graduated, you probably know him, his name's Nick Butler. He was very sick last year and um, he's doing well and, and fine. And I bring this up because when he got sick in the Dublin schools when he 10 years ago, this is an amazing place with amazing people that do amazing things. And the educators and the teachers that you have on staff are simply incredible. And my experience with Coach Beard as a teacher um, is just that. My son struggled uh, when COVID came. My younger son, Matt, who plays basketball for uh, Dublin Jerome, he's going to be a junior this year. He's played with Coach for three years. Or he's going to be a senior this year, and he played with Coach for three years. He, Coach found out that he was struggling in one of his online classes at Columbus State. Coach reached out and helped my son get back on track um, and maintain his, you know, very, maintain his A, a average. And without that, without Coach doing that, um, he might, you know, he might not even be able to play basketball this year. However, when I share that story with other parents, um, I find out, just like Mike Nutter said a minute ago, he does this for all the kids, not just basketball kids, many people inside the program, um, that are inside the school that aren't in the program. And I, I think that that's the kind of people that you want to have as a teacher, and, and those are the type of people that you have already. And when we switch that to the basketball side, you know, he, is, he holds the kids accountable. My kids made many mistakes, and when he has, he's been corrected. And he, puts in, he teaches the kids a good work ethic, and he teaches them to be accountable, and with hard work, good things come. And I think that, um, as Mike mentioned, we're not 100% sure what's going on, but when we talk to, when we talk to athletic director Joe Blind, as well as Principal Mike Oren, Many of the, the majority of the parents have not been interviewed or discussed or given any opportunity for any feedback on, on what, how the year went and what, what we think of the coach. So it leads me to believe that a minority of people on the team are making the majority of the decisions. And I'm here for that because I don't think that's right. I've never been to a school board meeting, support the Dublin school system 110% and believe in what you guys do. However, I'm here because it just feels like an injustice. And as Mike pointed out before, you know, if you were hiring a new coach, why would you allow someone that you don't support and don't believe in to sit on the board to help interview that new coach? It leads me to believe that this decision has been made in a vacuum and has not been discussed with the majority of the parents, and it just doesn't feel right. This isn't, this isn't if you look at the other schools and how they support their coaches, why does Dublin, Jerome, the only school that this coach has only last three years. And this is a revolving process and it's gone on long enough. And hopefully the board will, if they've made a decision, reconsider as Mike asked, as well as renew his contract. He's a good man doing good things. He, he relocated his family here. You guys have families, you raise kids. He does good things. And to ask him to not renew his contract, his passion and why he's a teacher here, doesn't seem right to me. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mike Decker. I 
Thanks, Mike. Thank you, board, for letting me speak. My name is Mike Decker. I live at 10512 Sugar Maple Drive in Plain City in Jerome Village. And uh, to be honest, I'm disappointed that I'm here. I have a little bit of a unique situation is I don't really have any dogs in the fight. I don't have any kids that are in high school. Uh, my kids are way far away from entering that. Um, but I have a very unique perspective and set of experiences that can talk to what's going on and what has gone on in, in Jerome specifically for the, the last, let's say, seven years or so. Um, so who I am, uh, I live in Jerome Village. I have 20 plus years in high school basketball, player, coach. Um, I was the head coach at a school in Pittsburgh called Woodland Hills where I was the 2012 Post-Gazette Coach of the Year. Uh, the last couple years and why this matters is last year I was an assistant coach at Centennial under Jamie Pearson, who's the former Jerome head basketball coach. In the year prior, I was an assistant, varsity assistant at Jonathan Alder High School where Mike Aron was previously principal. So why am I here? I'm here to represent the voice of the community and say that we're tired of coaches getting run out of Jerome because a few parents are upset because of lack of playing time or their kid isn't starting. Um, let's go through story by story what's happened. I moved here in uh, 2014, so we've been here about seven years. Since then, I've gotten to know the basketball community. Coach Pearson and I became close friends as he used to take the Jerome team to Bethel Park Christmas Tournament in Pittsburgh every year. I'm very good friends with Josh Bears, and I got introduced to Jamie Pearson. Jamie Pearson resigned in 2017 after bullying accusations. It took uh, nine months to, to set him free, and it, it caused emotional stress to him and his family to the point where he no longer felt comfortable to teach in Dublin and, and live. And this year he's moved out to Grandview. So he's no longer a teacher in Dublin or does he live in Dublin because of false bullying acquisitions that were brought up against him. This, the, the spear leader behind this, the puppet master, you will, is the same person who's involved in Richie Beard's uh, situation that goes on today. Um, it's unfair and as, as Paul alluded to, these are people's families and livelihoods that are at stake here. Um, let's move on to Jonathan Alder. I spent last year at Jonathan Alder. Prior to my coming there, there was a coach that was ran out, again, because of false accusations of a headbutt and coaching kids hard. These acquisitions were found false. And the reason I bring that and why this is pertinent is the principle that's allowing this to happen at Jerome today is the same principle that's at Jerome, Mike Aron, who has a history of letting parents make decisions and dictate what goes on in high schools. And then finally, let's move on to what's going on with Coach Beard. This isn't about whatever you hear potentially, right? This isn't about text message or inappropriate text messages. This is about lack of playing time and a kid not starting, okay? And they're masking these decisions around text messages, just like they did with Coach Pearson around bullying, is a way to hang a teaching job over his head to get him to resign. This is not fair. It, again, it, it messes with people's livelihoods. And this is about lack of playing time. And, and I added the article behind on there as you read, this is a history at Jerome. This is not a Dublin problem. This is not a, a Scioto problem. It doesn't happen there. Look at the coaching tenures. It doesn't happen at Kaufman. It happens at Jerome because administrators don't have the backbone to stand up to the parents when Johnny or Sally don't get enough playing time, right? If we want to talk about text messages, okay, when I signed up to be a head basketball coach and a teacher, I signed up not for X's and O's or not to win games. It was about mentoring young boys to be men and enter them into society as they move on in the world, right? Mentorship is not an eight by five job. Mentorship's a 24 by seven job. That might mean shooting a text saying, hey, I need to talk to you about something. I need to talk to your grades, stop down my office. Or after a tough game when a kid's down to respond to a text message at 11 o'clock at night. This isn't a, hey, you can only talk to a kid during certain hours, right? When you take on the responsibility of, of that, it's a 24 by seven job. And if that's what we're setting the precedence today, that coaches aren't allowed to be mentors, then I don't want my kids to grow up here. I don't want my kids to be a part of Jerome School District, right? And so I'm speaking here today to um, have this stop, right? We need to, to re uh, respect our, our coaches and teachers, and we need to uh, hold the administrative accountable for the decisions they make. Thank you. Thank you. Emmanuel.
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me. My name is Emmanuel Chidi Chukwumeze Ezirim. That alone tells you I have a different kind of testifying to do tonight. I am <clears throat> a recent transplant from uh, Hilliard Davidson. I now live at 9716 Erin Woods Drive in Dublin, Delaware County. I'm here to speak on behalf of Coach Beard as a new kid on the block in Dublin. And I have to tell you, I'm impressed with what, I'm, what I just saw tonight, because I, I never experienced this in Hilliard. That wasn't a part of that makeup over there. And, and what I'm seeing right here confirms the move from Hilliard. We had a game one time against Dublin Kaufman, and one of the kids from my school, Dublin, uh, Hilliard Davidson, at that point, called, called uh, um, <clears throat> Scooney Penn's son, the N-word. The referees heard it, and the referees kicked him out of the game, gave him a technical. We go back to Hilliard, and the kid didn't get punished. And as a matter of fact, not only did they not punish him, they made him a captain. What kind of example is that? And I, I say that to let you all know that you, you are doing good, and I don't want you to go too far. Beard hasn't done anything closely related to that. He has done nothing but give the kids appropriate opportunity based on their skill level. He didn't play favoritism. My kid is the one that's going here now. I had another one, the one that graduated from Hilliard Davidson. is 6'8", 300 pounds, the best player they had, at least his senior year when all this thing was going on, and they couldn't see any way to even honorable mention him for anything on the defensive line. And because I spoke up, they gather at the last minute and say he's the Iron Man of, please. We've seen all that. Richie Beard is a good man. He's a quality human being. If some people got too much power, and they like to lord it over other people. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how we even got to this point where I have to come defend this man. My other son, who is six foot seven, has a seven-foot wingspan. Uh, you're asking, um, it's from the mom. <laughs> <laughs> I left, I, I, I had some of that gene in my suitcase when I was coming to America, but I forgot my, uh, at the JFK, I lost that suitcase, so don't, don't. <laughs> but anyway, you know, this kid has got seven-foot wingspan. And the previous football coach that you let go who I don't think anybody came to defend, had the audacity to tell me that CC was number eight on his depth chart as a wide receiver. I'm going to let you think about that for a minute. And he's athletic enough to be a starter on Richie Beard's team, but he wasn't good enough to be on the field on the football team. And football teams have at least minimum 66 players, positions. You got offense, you defense. You've got the team that kicks off and the one that receives it. You've got the one that kicks a field goal and the one that defends against it. I can go on and on. I, actually, it's 88, but I let you off on 66. <clears throat> and they couldn't find a spot for a six foot seven kid and just tell him, raise your hand if you're sure and block a field goal, and block a punt, or block an extra point. The punishment there was punitive because he said, if I'm number eight, I'm going to work hard to be number two, or number three, or number one. For that reason, they refused to put him on the field at all. That's punitive. That's somebody being mean, cold, just being mean. And that was his year, the most critical year of recruiting. And here's a kid who's on this team, and this team wins 
three games out of 11. And five of those games, they got mercy ruled. What do you do as a coach when you're getting mercy ruled? Isn't that the time to put your scrubs in so they can find out if the thing is carpet or grass? And CC never had a chance to be on the field. And somebody is going to come and look at all this and have a reason to say they're going to let Beard go. Beard punished CC when he overslept and was late for practice. And he sat him down for about half of the game. It was appropriate. Nobody said anything. Nobody made any noise about it. I don't know why he would punish some other kid for doing the same kind of stuff. And then they want to get him fired. That's not fair. I haven't heard of that before. And I'm going to rest my case here because I can go on and on. But the man needs to stay here. And if the parents have an issue, it's a basketball team. There aren't that many of us. We can sit down and hash it out, figure out what it is they're angry about. We can talk about it and finish up that way. Thank you so much for giving me your time this evening. Thank you, sir. Fred Pajak. Thank you all for your time. My name is Fred Pugich, Jr. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of my background. Uh, I currently live right now at 9719 Persimmon Place, uh, Plain City in Jerome Village. I'm a uh, born and raised uh, Dublin kid, <clears throat> been here for uh, 40 years now. Um, just a little bit about my background. I personally don't have any kids right now in the Jerome um, High School system. My kids will be um, in the next few years as well, just like uh, Mike Decker. Um, But growing up here, um, I know a little bit about coaching. Um, I was a football player here. My father was a longtime um, college and professional coach for 40 years, to be be exact, uh, coaching at Ohio State in uh, in the NFL. Um, Like I mentioned, I played football. I was a uh, unanimous All-American here at Dublin Kaufman, where I graduated from. Um, And then after my college and professional career myself, I went on to coach for uh, six years at Ohio State, Texas A&M Commerce and in the UFL as well. So I I like to think I know a little bit about coaching. Um, I didn't have much time to prepare for this, but what I really wanted to say is the purpose of a coach is to unlock their players' potential to maximize their performance. Good coaches are role role models, and good coaches can help booster the confidence and self-esteem of their players. I've been around Coach Beard for a few years now, and I believe Richie is a great coach. He inspires even the youngest of athletes, and he helps kids become a better version of themselves. I do not believe coaches should be hired and fired like they are in professional sports organizations, especially when that coach has the majority of support of his players and his players' parents. Dublin Jerome is a premier program, both academically and athletically. We need to support our coaches at Jerome, just like they are supported at Scioto and Kaufman. This coaching carousel needs to stop so our kids can benefit from consistency and great leadership. Thank you for your time, and I hope you reconsider. Thank you. Len Kemp. Hi, my name is Len Kemp. I live at 8422 Greenside Drive in Dublin. Um, I have two boys. Uh, One has graduated from Dublin Jerome and played basketball under both Pearson and um, Coach Beard, and I have a current sophomore. Um, Here we go again. As a, job, uh, as a Jerome parent and as a basketball fan, here we are, we find ourselves what seems like running off another basketball coach based on parent input. And, um, you know, if there's something that's been done that's been, um, that's illegal or hurts the kids, I totally understand that. But, you know, if it's, um, if it's playing time, if it's starting time, if it's, they're not on varsity yet, I mean, w- what are we doing here? I mean, Unfortunately, Jerome has a long history of that as it pertains to basketball. And um, my experience uh, watching my oldest son play there, play for Coach Beard, I was uh, president of the Booster Club for a couple of years. So I kind of know what goes on, and I kind of know what kind of some of the parent discussions can be. And do we, do we live in a community where parents dictate who gets hired and fired in terms of coaches in Dublin? I think that's a really bad precedent. And if that's what's going on, um, we need to change it. So I'm, I'm here to support Coach Beard and to uh, make a plea for 
some sanity around coaches and, and why, why they are fired or why their contracts aren't renewed. I think we really need to take a close look at that. So I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. On to Board of Education committees. Does anyone have anything going on? Um, I have something to talk about. It's um, Ohio Fair School Funding Plan, and this is House Bill 1. Remember when DeRoff was declared, our state funding for schools was declared unconstitutional? Um, well, they're working on it again, and um, it's getting ready to move into the Senate if it hasn't already. And actually, Brian, do you mind talking, Mr. Kern, do you mind talking a little bit about what this would mean for Dublin if the Senate could pass it? And the reason I'm bringing this up now is because there's a resolution on the table um, to give support for this resolution for Dublin City Schools. And um, we're having a Zoom call with um, Senator Coonty next Monday to talk about this. Yeah, a little backdrop on this. Um, this is a bipartisan bill. Uh, that was in the last legislature that took two to three years of study. It's called, it was at that time, it's called the Cup Patterson Report. Um, House Speaker Cup, who is still House Speaker, is one of the ones that did a bipartisan effort to really study and uh, kind of going back to the Duralt roots and really study what a cost of education and stuff is across the state. And worked with local treasurers, superintendents, uh, and others throughout the state to try and come up with a formula that would be fair to all school districts and adequately fund them as such. As, as Lynn, as you brought up and stuff, I may not have brought up, but is we are reliant, especially here in Dublin City Schools on our local property tax base. Um, it is different throughout the state, but there are other many other areas where they're heavy reliant on the property tax as well. Um, this bill would then um, when fully funded, which it has a six-year implementation uh, period, uh, would mean another $10 million per year, per year, to Dublin City Schools, which is almost three mills of, of millage when you think about property taxes. So that is very significant and very, and very good for us as a district. So hence the support of this. Um, this is not the only, we are having a meeting on uh, April 19th for local uh, board members, superintendents and treasurers, Southwestern City Schools, Hilliard City Schools, Dublin City Schools, and Worthington City Schools to talk about this with Senator Kunze. And this is not the only area, it's happening across all the Senate districts across the state, um, put on by House School Board Associations, House Association School and Business Officials, and I believe BASA which is a superintendent's association, are all joining together to host these meetings. Um, as Lynn mentioned, it's already passed through the House and is in with the Senate right now. And so we want to make sure all, including our local Senator Kunze, is updated on um, the information so they can make the best decision as it goes through the process. So, and then up even to the Governor DeWine's office to make sure that they have the information once it gets there so there's no veto or line item veto potential there with that. So um, I know that's a lot of information, but a, a very worthwhile bill. And, uh, you know, like I said, we, we support it as in such that uh, they did, they went down to the local level, went to the local treasurers, the local superintendents and everyone to kind of develop this. And I, I think it's good for most districts and if not all districts in the state of Ohio. And this is the closest we've come to having some type of resolution in, in quite a while. Is that mine? Oops. Um, I'm, this is three pages. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to read just a couple of highlights. This resolution is to endorse the Fair School Funding Plan as contained in House Bill 1 and to encourage the 134th General Assembly to expedite the passage of the bill. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of the Dublin City School District that Number one, it is necessarily to formally endorse the Fair School Funding Plan as introduced in House Bill 1 of the 134th General Assembly to ensure that K-12 schools in Ohio are funded using a rational school funding system 
that meets the needs of all Ohio students in the 21st century. Imagine that. The treasurer is authorized to deliver or cause to be delivered a certificate, a certified copy of this resolution to community leaders, to members of the House of Representatives and the Ohio Senate, including representative and to the office of Governor Michael DeWine. This resolution shall be in full force and effective immediately upon its adoption. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mrs. May? Yes. Motion passes four to zero. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay, moving along. Dr. Lucas. Thank you. I was told to be brief. Actually, I, I told Lynn that I would be brief. And, and, and both uh, Lynn and, and Brian knows the challenge that that brings. So I will make this very fast. Uh, first and foremost, I want to congratulate the wrestlers. I know they have already gone. Um, but uh, having the ability to not only make it to the state level, but also to finish up as a runner-up and as a champion um, is, is a feat unto itself. Uh, my experiences uh, with wrestling goes w way back. Uh, once upon a time, as those of you that are in the crowd that are educators, uh, um, you, I, I was a football coach, and they said we need a junior high wrestling coach. And I said, I know nothing about wrestling. And the next thing I knew, I was the junior high wrestling coach, and I had to wrestle some of the best wrestlers because you know, you know, I was a little bit bigger and, and they thumped me around. They were eighth graders and they thumped me around for most of the season. So I, I learned and, uh, and I practiced the idea of how to respect those individuals with the type of training they put forth. Uh, so it, it's a great honor to see those individuals come through. Uh, my second uh, kudos for the week would be my Emerald Campus visit. Uh, Julie Blevins uh, took the opportunity to give me a tour. Uh, it's another one of those, uh, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. We come in here every day uh, to work. Uh, sometimes we have board meetings in here and the beauty of having Emerald Campus here is it allows central office personnel to really know and understand why we get into education. I can walk down the hall, down the steps, one flight, and instantly into the classroom. And uh, for any of you that have not visited this facility, you really need to take the time to do that because it is a gem. Um, uh, such uh, uh, energy, enthusiasm, um, and sometimes a little crazy as people come and go. But I have to tell you, you should be very proud of this facility, the leadership in this facility, because there is a lot of learning taking place and it's extremely positive. And sometimes, at least for me, and I think I speak for the rest of the individuals on the fourth floor, it's just a good break to, to come down here and say, this is why we're in this business. So I wanted to put that uh, out there for the entire Dublin community to see. Last but not least, um, I know we're going to take some action here on some retirements and you know, we have some people leaving and, and we're welcoming in a, a, a new superintendent very soon, so my time here is limited. But I want to make sure before we get, before I leave that, that uh, I put, put out there for everyone to know and understand uh, the work of Jill Reinhardt, uh, Tracy Deagle, and, and Gail Marsh. Uh, I could talk a long, long time about uh, Gail, given the fact I know Gail better than both Jill and, and Tracy, but uh, I have, I've gotten to know both uh, Jill and Tracy over the last month, six weeks. Extreme talent, uh, expertise, and it has absolutely been a pleasure uh, to uh, go to them for things that, that basically I don't know. Uh, it's a great opportunity to walk out and, and say we're in good hands uh, with both these individuals. Um, and Gail Marsh, 
Uh, you're going to see on the agenda that he is uh, uh, resigning. Um, we've been through a lot of battles together. And if you're in the HR business, uh, especially in the school HR business, there are just a lot of things that take place that you just don't even want to think about, talk about, look at, move forward, all those things. Uh, but I think Gail usually says it best is, uh, you know, when we go into battle, there's, there's, one, there's one HR person in central Ohio, or possibly even the state, uh, that I would want to go into battle with, and that would be Gail Marsh, and I appreciate both his contributions to the Dublin City Schools, also Tracy's contribution to the Dublin City Schools, and Jill's contribution. They do a great job. We wish them luck, and I know they will continue to do a great job as they move forward in their life. Thank you to all three. And that is my report. Well, that's a good segue because um, I think some of us would like to say similar. Um, anybody want to go? Any, anything to say before I I'd do? like to go first. <laughs> so I'd like to thank all three of you for the excellent job that you've done for Dublin throughout the years. I got to know Tracy first as the principal over at Davis Middle School and, and what a job she did over there. It was just amazing. The, the way she connected with the community and pushed the staff and, and students forward to achieve great things over there is, is truly a testament to the great job that she can do in any position. And then she took that to the deputy superintendent's role and that's been very amazing. Uh, she gets the job done is, is probably the bottom line. We can count on her to do any project and to do it well. And so we appreciate what Tracy has done for our district. Jill, we've known each other for so long and you've worked your way up through the ranks and, and you've done so many of the different jobs in our district. But the key thing with Jill Reinhardt is she understands that the basis for a good quality education is being able to read. And she has done wonders for our reading program throughout the years. And, and that doesn't mean she just sticks to traditional methods. She looks for the best way to provide that reading instruction to our students. And I think I will remember Jill for that probably more than anything. Thank you so much, Jill. And Gail, you're the quietest HR person I've ever seen, but you get the job done. And the, the nice thing is, well, there are trials and tribulations in the, in the HR role, and we do have tough situations here and there. But the thing that I would like to comment on is the quality of the teachers that you brought to the district. That is a true celebration when you can bring excellent teachers into the district and make sure that we're providing the best possible instruction for our students. And then all the other support staff that surround them, whether they're the classified or the administrators that we brought to the district. I think that you've done just a fabulous job with that. And we are truly sorry to lose you. So thank you very much for the job that you've done. We're losing three at the same time, and that, that is, uh, that's going to be tough on our district, but uh, we're going to do our very best to try and get to the level that you guys have provided uh, throughout your years of service here. Thank you so much for everything. Well said, Rick um, and Dr. Lucas. It's tough to add more to that, but... Uh, I'll be brief. I just want to thank you all for your years of service. Um, obviously, this past year has been, been very difficult and stressful on everyone. Um, I'd like to wish you and your families you know, the best in the future. And uh, there are a, a lot of big shoes to fill. Um, we, we will fall loss here without you around the table. Um, but, but I'll leave you with this, that our, our district and all of our students are better off because you were here. And thank you. And I, too, want to thank all of you. Uh, I was just thinking of some of my favorite memories. And uh, for, for uh, Dr. Diebel, I think it starts with, like, the Davis day where you were, did you actually go to the Davis thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wow, that person is awesome. <laughs> and so you did a great job there. The security was cool. The, what do you call it, the little Irish thing that they put, like, it's kind of the, Thing. You know, that was really cool. So you did such a great job there, and, and you were able to hear and help us 
question of fear and question of prison are very common in the world. So we really can do it. And then my buddy Jill, hey, language art, some of you. And lastly, I want to thank all three of you. Um, you're truly some of the best people I've, I've ever worked with. And that you really are. And I'm really sorry to see you go. So um, thank you for everything you've done for our school district. See you down the road. Thank you. OK, moving along to treasurer's comments. Oh, it's always so hard to follow Dr. Lucas and everyone <laughs> here, but uh, with our exciting uh, stuff in the treasurer's office, but uh, some good <laughs> stuff here. Um, uh, we do have two transfers on this evening. Uh, as you've seen the last couple meetings, uh, we've done transfers to close out the classes at uh, 2020 at the high schools, and this, I believe, is the last one. This is Kaufman's, as that goes into the other class of 2021 and other groups. Um, another transfer is, this is actually uh, Administrative Guideline 7510A um, with rentals that we receive on our uh, synthetic field fund uh, is there's transfers to be made to each high school athletic departments. So, um, so that is that. Um, and then there's the approval of appropriation change. This is a miscellaneous state grant that we get for like internet uh, coverage and stuff and so forth. And with adding Hopewell in debt this year, we got an extra $1,800 per building. And so we had to appropriate that. And then the March financial report, um, really as, as you can see in there, we're on um, line with estimates and revenues and expenditures at this point in the year. Um, we, will, uh, we did just get the settlement in for Union County. Um, and so as we move forward and through the um, April financial report and into the May uh, financial forecast, uh, we'll make updates as such uh, to reflect that changes and other things that are going on um, out there financially. Other than that, that's all I have this evening. Is there any questions? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes, motion passes. Thank you. Dr. Dupre? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for the kind remarks this evening. We uh, greatly appreciate it. Tonight, there are no items uh, for your approval, so I just wish to share a few things that are happening in our district uh, that would be of interest to you. The first, uh, as I shared with you on Friday, is that we are opening a student vaccine clinic here, uh, thanks to a partnership with Nationwide Children's Hospital and Columbus Public Health. We have um, several vaccines to give, beginning uh, with the first dose on April 23rd. At first, we opened this opportunity just to our seniors and did so over the weekend. We still have some doses remaining after the senior interest uh, was indicated. So now, as of today, we've opened that up to 16 and older in our district. And we hope that we'll have all of our doses accounted for uh, after doing so. For anybody who may be out there uh, watching the board meeting with a 16-year-old or older, uh, the the deadline for sign up is tomorrow at midnight. We are, are also asking parents to return consent forms by Friday. Those will be emailed to parents to complete. Uh, and this clinic will be held at Scioto High School and transportation uh, will be using buses from Kaufman and Jerome to transport our kids uh, to and from the clinic. Even our drivers, we'd like to just transport them ourselves to make sure that they get to Scioto okay and back to their home school. 
Also, I've been updating you, as has Dr. Lucas, on graduation. As you know, uh, Ohio State still has um, confined the number of people who can gather for an event. Um, we are preparing with the Schottenstein Center should Ohio State uh, dismiss that, um, that order. And if they do and we can move forward with the Schottenstein Center, Jerome's graduation has been moved to Saturday, May 29th at 2.30. And that's to accommodate uh, more time between events so that we can properly clean uh, and prepare for the next group to come in. Scioto's would be Sunday, May 30th at 2.30, and Kaufman's would be Sunday, May 30th at 7.30. Um, because Jerome's date has changed by one day, we will be coming to you at the next board meeting to have you reapprove this year's calendar to show that change in the graduation date for Jerome. If we are not able to get into the Schottenstein Center uh, because of current local health alerts uh, and constraints, we will be holding a drive-through for our diploma pickup. And for Jerome, it would be the same day as their commencement, which is May 29th uh, at 1 p.m. And for Scioto and Kaufman, May 30th at 1 p.m. Another item to just update you on today um, is DCS Virtual K-8. As you know from my board reports, we have um, asked parents for their initial interest in this program, and we've had 900 students in grades K through eight uh, show their interest in online schooling for next year. So now it's time to ask for them to make official application to the program. So the official application for DCS K-8 virtual is April 14th through April 21st. This is really a crucial window for us because we do need to make some staffing decisions. I am very excited though. We've asked for some early interest from our staff and so far we have about 23 staff members who have indicated they'd like to teach online. So that's great news. Last, um, it's been a while since I've talked this much at a board meeting, excuse me. Uh, last, we, uh, I have a, a DEI uh, update for you, our diversity, equity, and inclusion group. Our district committee met last week, and we were updated on our action steps. Uh, I would expect that Dr. Marshhausen will come to you uh, in coming months to talk about staff affinity groups. We also did create our agreements for communication that we'd like to share with our director of DEI when they are onboarded and I included those in your board report for last week. We also shared opportunities for summer learning around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this week, um, Dr. Marshhausen, myself, Mr. Boney, and others will be interviewing our two finalists for the director of DEI, and we hope that we can present them to you um, at our next board meeting. Any questions tonight? Actually, I have a question, please. Uh, regarding the remote academy or the RLA yes. for K through eight, um, is that like a district wide thing? It's not by by school building, correct? That's correct. It will okay. be district wide, so it's similar to the Emerald Campus. Mm -hmm. Think of it almost like an academy. So the students will still be official Bailey Elementary students, um, but they will be uh, educated with other students in the district and with a district teacher, not a Bailey-specific teacher. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to confirm that. And the second thing to confirm, is that a full year commitment or is it semester by semester? That's a great question. It is a full year commitment because of the staffing, as you know, from going through this this year. Um, and we're very excited. Mr. Stark and his team are working with academics uh, to secure uh, some sites here on our campus where we can pull all of our teachers together who are teaching online and create their own professional learning community so that they don't feel so isolated. We're very excited about that opportunity. Dr. Marshhausen brings a lot of experience with him as well with the online format, and so he has some vision also. Thank you. Um, thank you for the information on the COVID situation, um, especially the shots. Uh, just a comment on the seniors and now potential juniors getting the shot. That is an option. The parents can sign into that. It's not a requirement. And I wanted to make sure our public knew that. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to make sure our public knew that our committees, the data committee, protocol committee, all the information committee, all our committees are continuing to meet 
to provide or to gather the latest information and continue to make uh, decisions for the district that uh, we've had uh, some people that have asked about, you know, well, are we doing this, are we doing that? We are continuing to meet and to gather all that information. So it's very important. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I have a question about uh, commencements. Yes. Um, if they do move forward at the shot, um, since it will be limited capacity, will those be streamed online so that family members could, could watch it or will they be recorded so that it could be watch later yes we are working with markies uh, for sound and video uh, with the shot we are also working on even getting the jumbotron turned on at the shot and steen so that families can see their child better and mr melody you are correct uh, our tickets would be limited to four per student should we do should we go to the shot and steen center at, at the given levels right now they could potentially change that to either, you know, depending upon what's going on with COVID, that it could go higher or lower. That's absolutely correct, yes. I reached out to Ohio State today. They were hoping that, you know, sometime in the next coming weeks here, in the short term, we will hear um, about the decision from Ohio State. It, it really is a wait and see. And so we're trying to keep one foot in each one of the boats right now to make sure we're moving forward with either option so that our seniors have the celebration they deserve. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. I don't have anything to approve tonight, but that doesn't mean I'm not coming here in a few more weeks for some large dollars. We are working with big thanks to Brian Kern and Tyson Hodges. You know, we have $6 million a year to spend with PI money per improvement, and we're very thankful and grateful for that. And you would never, it's such an odd thing to say about, it might sound difficult to spend six million. And while it's not difficult to spend it, we have a lot to spend on it. It's sure difficult to keep track of it and to make sure we're doing it appropriately. And with all the POs and the projects and the legal pieces and the bids and what have you. And so again, I wanna thank Brian Kern and Tyson Hodges. We meet with them constantly and we actually have a three year plan right now of how we're rolling this out so it matches with their forecasts. Have you seen on my weekly reports, but just to tell our viewing public here, very exciting stuff. We're putting new flooring down. That bit, that bit is out right now. So, Mr. Melody, if you have a flooring company or something like that, or you know of somebody, you, know, you would have a conflict, obviously, but if you know of somebody, you know, you can throw in a bid. It's out there. Um, that's the great thing about public bidding. Anyone can throw in a bid. And we have a flooring, flooring out there and paving right now out there as well. Paving, we're going to do crack, fill, and seal. Doesn't sound that exciting, but let me tell you, it'll make all the parking lots look real new. And that's going to be Kaufman, Chapman, Penny, Riverside, Scottish, Grizel, Sells, and Davis. While Dr. Deagle hasn't talked so much at a board meeting, I feel like I'm doing a bit of an auction with that, but there's a lot of properties out there. I wanted to get them all out. We're also putting on a new roof at Indian Run, their flat roof. For all those Indian Run folks, they'll know they need it. They've needed it for quite a bit. And just to tell you why that one is just happening now and not years past, is it's only ranked as our worst roof now. So does that tell you something about some of our past roofs that we've done? So it's Indian Run's uh, turn now. Athletics, uh, the Davis School Middle Bleachers, Davis, School, Davis Middle School Bleachers, Interior Bleachers, if you remember, we did that last year. The bids came way above budget, so we have to rebid it out this year. And the Kaufman High School Exterior Visitor Bleachers, we're gonna bid that out, either to replace it or to repair it. Just don't know yet. That's the excitement of the bid. When it comes in, we'll, we'll check it out. And lastly, at the end of this summer, in August, we're putting out two huge bids that will start next year. This is where we're starting to plan way ahead, and that's to replace the entire HVAC system at Riverside and Old Sawmill. I mean, replace the whole HVAC system. They have what's called an old univent system. It is at end of life, so this system would bring in new heat, new boilers, new ducts. So it's, a, it's a whole new system. We've done it recently at Cells, and it worked out great. So that's just a little something we'll be coming to you in the next few weeks with different bid results and recommendations on what we think should be next. Any questions? Jeff, I had the opportunity to visit Operations we Center We did the have other Mr. Weiniger over at Operations. And, and that was a wonderful tour that I was able to get. Could you make a couple comments on the security features that, that Absolutely. you um, were very proud to show off? <laughs> we do have at Shire Rings Road at Operations Center we have a room that we recently converted over. It was an old wood shop room that we recently took a few months to convert over last year. And it has a bank of televisions against the wall. 
and the bank of televisions is used to monitor every camera in the district. And we have somewhere up to 350, 400 cameras. So the bank is used for two reasons. One, it gives us the opportunity on a daily basis for the team to come in and make sure the cameras are working because you can visually see all cameras at one time. Uh, also, Chuck Collier, being now part of the operations teams, also sits in that room. He can also monitor the cameras and he's given access to the Dublin uh, police, same cameras. So for example, if God forbid there's a tragedy at one of the schools, uh, we can even have someone in our room and then the bank of televisions, which have all the cameras, can turn into one school where you get close-ups of every one thing that you need. So Chuck is actively working with the schools now on their needs for incremental cameras, or, and Chuck has also put, the, Chuck's done a real nice job on this, put together a nice list of those cameras that need to be replaced as well. And replaced not because they're not working, it's just end of life, we're trying to get ahead of matters and, and something better. So that's uh, all that operations and having IT and Chuck there at the same time with that information has really worked out well. And we really appreciate the move forward on the projects that you're working on with uh, regard to security in our world today. There's so many things going on and, and knowing we're doing everything we can to make sure our students are, and staff and, and are safe point, is and important. to that point, Mr. Weiniger, you know, we are finishing up our access control project and that will give access control on every exterior door in the district. The elementary should be finished by next month, and then the secondary schools start immediately after that. Uh, middle schools will be done by August, and high schools by January. And this will give the ability for every exterior door to be badge red, and will also have an alarm on there. So if the door stays open, somebody will know that that door is propped open. To your point about security. Thank you. Hey, Thank you. Jeff, before you're done, I, I have a sure. question, not, not about what you went over tonight, but when I review the, uh, as Rick mentioned, we're still meeting with committee-wise, from COVID standpoint and everything, and when we look at the results of the um, mitigation strategies, one of the, the themes that's still coming back is concerns over uh, cleaning in the buildings. Are there any updates uh, or changes that have been made recently for, for cleaning or improvements there for? We have our protocols out there. Um, uh, actually, we've, the, some of the supplies have changed. You know, one of the big things we've been asking for is getting is Clark's wipes or something like that. So we just made an $18,000 purchase for wipes to start passing out to the schools as that's becoming more and more available. We're starting to do that. Obviously, you've heard what the CDC has said about we have not changed our protocols yet about wiping or cleaning the tables. Uh, as far as enforcing those guidelines, it's really up to the schools and really up to what they feel is needed at that time based upon the CDC guidelines. But uh, we feel that so far things are moving in the right direction and we've gotten quite a bit of positive, positive feedback from the principals on some of the places we've been taking, you know, over time. We've actually had more positive feedback in the past 45 days than we've had in the last three months. So that shows some of the changes, some of the feedback that we're not only giving to our own district folks, but even to the vendors is, is actually working. Thank you. Do, you, do you see the results of the mitigation strategies that are sent to us? I do. Those places? Okay. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening again, everyone. Just a few updates from communications. Um, very busy right now promoting, Tracy mentioned the vaccine clinic on April 23rd, promoting that, along with helping Aaron promote DCS virtual signups. And so I'm gonna spend some time on those things this past week. Met with Dr. Marshhausen to go over his 100 uh, day plan and to talk about communications going forward. So that was a productive meeting. Um, and again, we're pushing out information on the Aviation Academy right now. And for everybody watching this or watching a recording of this, if your student needs a summer job, please go to our summer job resource page. My department's worked really hard in putting together a list of local employers who are hiring students for the summer. So that's on our website. And speaking of the summer, summer school information, as well as information about camps and sports and those types of things offered in the summer are also at the top of our list right now in terms of pushing things out. And I'll just end with this reminder that breakfasts and lunches are free through September 30th. So um, please take advantage of that. Um, for your student. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank Qu you. Question, yeah. Doug. Um, I know with COVID, it's really hurt us in terms of recognition of our retirees from last year. And, and I didn't know if you guys are thinking at all about this year for our retirees and we had, seeing. Unfortunately, Rick, we had talked about that, community champions, the military signing, all being virtual one more spring, um, just because of you know, right. not gathering for events. So, um, but we've talked about it. Okay, yep. thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. 
Um, we would normally have the Executive Director of Human Resources have some comments. However, we are going to go into executive session at this time. In accordance with, the, with Ohio Revised Code 121.22, 123, 4, 5, and 6, the Dublin Board of Education will go into executive session to consider, number one, the employment of a public employee or official. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. So call the roll, please. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. Knight? Yes, motion passes. We will be back after that.
All right, we're back in session. Um, Executive Director of Human Resources, Mr. Marsh. Good evening. Just like to review the certified and classified agenda. Before I do that, I did, uh, Dr. Lucas, Board of Education, I did receive another resignation this afternoon. I would ask your consideration to ask, add that to the board agenda. Uh, it's from Thomas Schraver, uh, his resigning at the end of the school year, effective at the end of this year. So ask that you uh, consider adding that to the agenda tonight. On the certified agenda, a um, couple things of note. Um, would like to say thank you to Dr. Ann Perez, Davis Middle School principal. Uh, she is resigning, pursuing another opportunity, but uh, say thank you to her for her dedication to the Dublin City School uh, students, community, and the, the Davis family. Tonight on the agenda on certified, you'll also uh, note number two, those are your typical administrative contract renewals. I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you uh, on behalf of the district to our administrators. Uh, this has been a trying year for everyone in the district. Our administrators are absolutely amazing, and the hard work, their dedication that they've shown, at, you know, at the all last year, over the summer, and this year uh, during this pandemic is amazing. Um, so um, just wanted to say that as you consider uh, the renewal of their contracts. Um, tonight, resignation retirements. We do have a couple of our teaching staff that are retiring, Marilyn Howard, Thomas, uh, elementary fifth grade with 35 years in our district uh, and Karen Sumner Bailey Elementary School 20 years of service to the district so thank you to both of them you also notice uh, number four is our typical contract renewals for our certified staff so that's a port important agenda item uh, that I wanted to make note of on the certified side on the classified agenda tonight again uh, be remiss to just quickly uh, recognize several of our retirements from our classified employees Constance Denny Riverside Elementary School cafeteria uh, cook and cashier 23 years of service Lynn Flower Wright Elementary School paraprofessional 13 years uh, Margaret Miller Kaufman Athletic High School secretary 17 years in the district Marsha Whetstone one of our bus drivers was 15 years in the district and Pamela White uh, Sciota High School Athletic Secretary with 21 years in the district. So it's that time of year when folks are thinking about retirement and want to make sure we say thank you to all of our employees that have reached that milestone. Uh, we do have several stipends for your approval um, and they're there uh, for, for you to read, but uh, lots of work going on in the summer. Um, I guess one of the stipends I would highlight is Daniel Wright Ele Elementary, the summer lunch program. That's a fantastic program that uh, Lucas, uh, his staff put together uh, during the year to make sure that uh, folks have the opportunity for uh, that lunch program. So thank you to him and his staff. Questions tonight? Nope. Thank, thank I you. believe at this time we need a motion to amend the agenda with that um, number three classified, I mean certified resignation. Is there a motion? For a second? Second. Okay. Call the roll to uh, amend. Mr. Yes. Uh, Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Um, thank you, Mr. Marsh. So there's a, re um, the superintendent recommends to approve items 12A through 12C. As amended, is there a motion? So move. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Uh, Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Melody? No. And Mrs. May? Yes. Motion passes. Three to I, one. I would like to just make a brief comment that. Um, I, I just ha I do have concerns about the performance of one of the individuals up for contract renewal. That is why I voted no, and that uh, I will meet with Dr. Marsh Marshhausen and ensure that uh, my concerns are addressed in the future. Thank you. Okay. Are there any items for the board discussion? Nope. Do we have any future agenda items? 
Well, at this time then, our meeting is adjourned. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hare? Yes. Mr. Weininger? Yes. Mr. Melody? Yes. And Mrs. May? Yes, motion passes. Thanks, guys. Have a